More now on those leaked WhatsApp messages from Matt Hancock, more published this morning, appearing to show a dispute between him and the then Education Secretary, Sir Gavin Williamson, over closing schools early in the pandemic. Let's bring some reaction from Jeff Barton, the General Secretary of the Association of School and College Leaders. Hello to you. Thanks for joining us. So, morning, the then Education Secretary saying teachers are lazy. I know, it's pretty squalid, isn't it, as a start to the day, Kay? Because, you know, what I remember both from being in meetings physically with the Secretary of State and indeed very regularly in online meetings is there was a recognition that at a time of huge national anxiety that if we were to win the hearts and minds of parents that it was now safe to send their children back in. The only way you would be able to do that is by having the teaching profession as the frontline workers when there was no vaccination programme and all of that stuff, stepping up and doing it. And that's what they did. And that's why there's a particular sense from me of how contemptible those comments are denigrating, stereotyping teachers when they were the very people who the nation needed to focus on young people in the way that the government hadn't. Interesting to see there was a, a battle of words between the, edu the then Education Secretary and the then Health Secretary as to whether or not it was the right thing to do to open schools. Where are you on that? Oh, I, you know, the, the, the territory that, that I exist in is about education. And what I know is that the people who I represent, school and college leaders, were being told, yes, we're going to open schools and colleges and there need to be face coverings. Now, you'll remember as well as I do, that became a hugely contentious issue where I was being asked by interviewers, what do you think about face coverings? And I was saying, I, haven't, I don't know anything about face coverings. We have to be able to trust the scientists. And what today is showing us is that this kind of political government by WhatsApp and an arms race between what England says and Scotland says is a million miles away from the principled ethical leadership that school and college leaders were trying to do. They wanted the reassurance that if you say we're going to have face coverings, then that's what we will do. And the problem for them was that we had parents then sending in legal letters saying, my child's not wearing a face covering. Other parents saying, well, I'm not sending my child if they're sitting next to someone without it. Leadership needed firm, clear decisions. And what we've seen today is it was about political infighting. And the thing I regret, Kay, after 30-odd years in education, I want the brightest and best young people in our country to choose to go into politics because they can make a difference. Well, they'll be reading those WhatsApp meetings, messages and thinking, that's the last place I want to go. And shame on those politicians for the way they conduct themselves. Um, would you release your WhatsApp messages? I wouldn't, and I hope I haven't got friends or indeed enemies who might want to. And I think there is a kind of real politic about this. Of course we all use WhatsApp, and of course we'll all have things that we might not want to be public. This is a bit different, though, isn't it? Because what the implication is of governments which traditionally, through a civil service, have worked through due process, minutes being taken, it's looking today as if very significant public health decisions were being made by people not based on scientific evidence. So we see the chief medical officer actually was in two minds about whether face coverings needed to be worn or not. But a decision is made that they will be worn in England. Why? Because that's what's happening in Scotland. And that's why I go back to my opening word. It's squalid. Um I wonder what you would say to Matt Hancock if you could speak to him today. Um, he has put out a statement saying he's terribly disappointed that these 100,000 uh, WhatsApp messages that he handed over to the woman that has now given them to a third party, he said that she broke an NDA, non-disclosure agreement. Oh, I, I don't know if I want to get drawn, drawn into all of that. I mean, I, I, I think that... We kind of hope, in the way that I said previously, that our politicians are there for public service. I think we've seen with Mr Hancock, who is an MP here in Suffolk, that actually Mr Hancock appears to be more important than a sense of national duty. That's a great shame, I think, if we're going to attract the brightest and the best to go into politics in the future. This is too much about personalities and not about what was a massive national health crisis where important decisions were to be made. And what we saw was the parents, frankly didn't trust the politicians. You know, you had Boris Johnson right at the beginning of January, six times on the Andrew Marr show, saying schools will be open tomorrow. Within 24 hours, they had been open, but children were being sent home. And so the people parents ultimately were looking to were the people I represent, school and college leaders and teachers and teaching assistants. They were the people who were the national heroes in this. And to hear them being denigrated and sneered at in the way that we have done by these uh, ex-politicians, or at least yesterday's men, 
I think does them no credit at all. Okay, for now, thank you. Thanks a lot.